The costumes in season three of Bridgerton are wild. The costume designers this season were on one because they were unhinged and I'm here for it. So I decided I'm gonna make one. Now listen, listen, I know what I said in the past about Regency dress. I'm not a fan of Regency. Don't come at me. But it's just kind of, the silhouette is a little boring. I'm sorry, I said it. I'm just not a fan. But, hear me out, Bridgerton is not Regency. They, in this third season, they don't even keep the silhouette anymore. Only the, like, side Bridgerton characters for season three have more Regency appropriate dress. Everybody else, like background characters and all the main characters, no, they're, they're wild. The fabrics, the silhouette, everybody has like, like a little curve in sleeves. Sleeves are big this season, especially with Cressida. Oh my God. Oh my God. Listen, she was one of my favorite fur costumes. You can't change my mind. She walked in with those bell sleeves and that thing on her neck. Done. I want it. We're not making that today though. And I thought I would give myself a little bit of a challenge with this one too. So I'm only gonna be using thrifted materials. So I have this pattern, the McCall's Regency costume dress. And we're kinda gonna be using this. So after watching it and then kind of re-watching it a little bit for research on this video, I have some like key things that make these costumes specifically like Bridgerton costumes. And the first one is that there are layers. All the dresses are layered. So there's always like a sheer panel on top and then another panel on below that one. Sometimes there's even another panel below that one. But we're gonna be, we're gonna do at least two layers. Another key thing that I see in most of the dresses is that they're flat in the front, but there's gathering in the very back, in the back waist area. There's also a lot of like really big bows on the back of dresses. Uh, another key element we need to keep is the short poof sleeves. And one thing that I thought was really clever that the costume designers did was they take this small kind of like rectangle of a stiffer material and gather it and then put it here at the shoulder seam so it keeps the poof kind of like coming out. So we'll use that technique too. Another key thing on Bridgerton dresses is the embellishments. Of course, we need sparkles, we need flowers, we need something like embroidery. These dresses are loud. So first things first, we need to go to the thrift store and gather our materials and find out uh, what kind of dress we're actually gonna make. Cause I, I, have n I have no idea. I don't have anything in mind. I just have a vague idea of what I'm doing. Let's go. I'm at the thrift store. I really hope I find what I need here because I do not feel like being out of the house anymore today. So wish me luck. I think I got it. I think we're good. Okay, let's go home. Okay, we're back and this is what I have. Most everything I got was either a bed sheet or a curtain. I got this blue bed sheet. I got these curtains that have this sheer embroidered over it. I got these curtains with this flower embroidery pattern. I got this dress, which I almost don't want to tear up because it is really pretty, but it's like a zillion sizes too small for me and I will never fit into this. And also it's a wedding dress. 
I don't, where would I, why would I wear this? It's okay. It's okay to cut it up. It's fine. We're cutting it. And then I got this dress that we're gonna tear all the little flowers off. Yeah. And put them on our dress. This is what I'm thinking for the, for the top, the bodice. I'm gonna cut it out of this. Okay, so I'm actually not sure. Okay, I know I want this to be the, the top, so. so we have that. And once I get it cut up out, I can play with it and figure out how we're gonna do it. These blue-green sheets will be the base of the skirt uh, with this layered on top of it, which I really liked. And then this kind of I feel like it ties these two together with this like champagne color in the embroidery. And for this, I actually don't know and I don't know if it works. Maybe I will use this white part as a bow in the back and then maybe use the pink as a poof sleeve with the gold over it. And I feel like all those colors work together. Or maybe I'll use this gold is the poofy sleeve, or maybe I should just keep the poof sleeves the same color as the skirt. Decisions. And I know usually when I do a historical costume, I make the undergarments first, but I'm not gonna make a pair of Regency stays because I just don't feel the need to, because again, this isn't Regency. So I'm just gonna wear a modern bra. So there. I guess let's tear up this dress and get my pattern out and start from there. If I know I'm about to make some heavy alterations to a pattern, I'll trace it out on a separate sheet of paper before I cut it. That way you always have the original just in case you mess up and in case you wanna make it again in a different side. The first alteration I did was bring down the neckline because Bridgerton dresses are very boobacious. The next thing I do is close the horizontal dart. It seems like most of the dresses in the show only have one vertical dart or a small bit of pleating right under the breast. After holding the pattern up to myself in the mirror, I realize that it's too long. In the show, the bodices always end right under the boobage. So I mark out where I need to trim it, fold the dart in the correct direction, and then cut off the desired length. After much deliberation, I decided to use the lace as the straps and the beaded area as the main part of my bodice. I originally planned to remove some of the beading from the darts, so I used some fabric glue on the back to keep the threads from unraveling and losing all the beadwork, but you end up seeing the glue in the front as like this dark stain, and I didn't end up trimming away any of the beadwork because it seemed like too much work. So the glue ended up being a waste of time and not worth it in the end. Now that we have the top figured out, I'm going to set it to the side for now because we need to let the glue dry. So now we need to figure out the skirt. So I have my sheet and I think I will just use the hemmed part as the bottom. And I'm just going to hold it up to me and figure out how long I need it and then just cut it across. All right, now we got my skirt. We'll attach it in the back and then do some like pleating, gathering, bundling nonsense. Uh, let me cut out this exact same shape in the sheer fabric. Okay, so I decided a couple things on the fly. I am gonna have the sheer panel be longer because it's gonna be a little bit of a train in the back, because why not? And then the sheer curtains, there was two panels but one of them is in pretty rough shape and has a lot of tears. So I'm only gonna use one, which is not as wide as the skirt. So I'm gonna do the skirts separately and then this one just won't be as gathered. This one won't be as gathered, period. And I'll use the other panel for the sleeves. I should have enough in there for the sleeves. And how am I gonna do the train? You might be asking. I don't know. I'm going to 
I guess put it on Clara back there and then just kind of cut it in the shape I want. I'm taking a lot of liberties with this costume, which I think is part of the fun. You get to really like let go, throw caution to the wind. We'll make it work. I did remember I have these little appliques that I got that I got at an estate sale. They're vintage, so they're a little bit yellowed, but I'm gonna use them for this because I, I think they'll be great. Maybe it's like go across the waist or something. I'm not sure how I'll incorporate them yet, but we'll figure it out. So I technically did not get them at the thrift store when I went the other day, but they are not new. So I it, it's not cheating. It still counts. All right, so I'm gonna mark my center front on this and then sew up the back most of the way and leave a gap at the top for the zipper. I think for the overskirt, no, I'll do the same thing for the overskirt, that's fine. So let's sew these bad boys together. I have the underskirt sewn up and then I left a little bit at the top open for the zipper, uh, but all of that is gonna get like pleated or whatever in the back. And then I kept the overskirt separate and I didn't cut the underskirt to be the same size as the overskirt. I just made the overskirt the size of the underskirt. By taking a chunk out of the other panel that was kind of mostly intact. And I think because I'm gonna put this in the very back, you won't see it because it's where all the gathers are. So I can kind of like hide it. And then we can keep the nice bit here in the front. But now that we have the skirt kind of together, I can't do anything else until I have the top done. And the top is in pieces currently, but we do have all the darts sewn in. And then the lining is just kind of pinned currently. This is the back piece because I really need another hand for this part because it's it's too big, but I can't, I can't see, I can't fix it myself. So I need somebody to help me and currently there's nobody home. So we're gonna leave it for the moment. My hand stitching is not very tight. How much do I care? Not, not really, not at all. Okay. And then this is what it looks like with the sleeves. This, I think it's really cute. But I can't attach the sleeves yet until I attach the lining. But we are making some progress. All this beadwork on the front of this while being very cute and very Bridgerton appropriate is also quite annoying. I wonder, instead of a lining, if I just fold this under and then hide the stitching with the beads, and then I wouldn't have to do a lining. That could work. Anyways, that's where we're at. But I think that's enough for today. I'm kind of done. Trying to figure out this pattern is a lot for my twin brain cells to figure out. So I'm gonna give them a break. Okay, let's come back tomorrow. So I have the top mostly done. I did some questionable construction methods with this one. I was really struggling with how I would finish the neckline because this beading is really tough to get it all undone enough to sew it. And it's all really connected. And so even though I glued the back of it, I just didn't think it would stay very well. I didn't know what I was gonna do and it really had me in a bind. And then I remembered nothing matters and everyone's gonna die. So I decided to uh, glue a bunch of stuff down. Not a bunch, just, just a little. The top part, right here, this blue binding, I hand stitched it down and then flipped it over and glued it down on the back. Did not finish those raw edges. I'm not gonna finish any of the raw edges. Same thing with the back binding, but I did hand stitch that down very loosely. Real loose run and stitch with that one. And the only thing that still needs to be finished is the armhole, which I, I'm gonna put a sleeve on. So that'll be that. So now I need to attach the skirt to the front 
until about about the side seam and then I'll start doing the gathers or the pleating whatever I decide and I still need to cut out and make the sleeves let's go ahead and attach this skirt so I've made some real progress issue with what I've done so far is the I've made little pleats right here and right here and I feel like it gives it some weird body at the side and I'm not sure if I like it but I'm also not sure if I don't like it enough to undo it and I'm kind of leaning towards I don't care so what are you gonna do but other than the weird I do feel like it's giving very Bridgerton vibes. Look at that. Hmm? Hmm? It's too long and I keep stepping on it. I still need to do the sleeves. I'm gonna make a big bow for the back. I need to hem it because it's entirely too long. I did a poor job of measuring that earlier. Oh, and then we still have all those flowers on the other dress. We gotta clip all those flowers and then figure out where we're putting those bad boys. Okay. But I think I'm done for today to be continued. So I said I didn't care, or at least I thought I didn't care. Turns out I did, because I fixed it. I unpicked it and then put in a row of gathering stitches and gathered it and sewed it down in the back. And it looks a lot nicer. And now we have a nice fuller back and I think it looks more Bridgerton-esque. And I also went in and put in a invisible zipper. But now I can't really put it off any longer. I've got to put these sleeves in. I hate setting sleeves. It's not that hard. It's just annoying. Anyways, let's put the sleeves on. She really is looking cute. And I did more work on the sleeves than I care to admit. I did not want to do that much for them, but I kind of needed to, I guess. Anyways, time for the appliques. That's the fun part. I gotta go derobe Clara over there and dress her up. So Clara is not the same size as me. She lacks some curvature and also height. She used to be my exact height, which was very convenient when hemming things, uh, but she lost a few inches due to user error in time. She's quite old. The back looks cute, the little dip. She really could be fine like this. It's quite cute, but it just like it just needs a little bit more for a Bridgerton dress, you know? Also, I need to remove these flowers. That's going to take a minute. Oh, okay, let's go. <laughs> One week later. Okay, it's been like a week since I've worked on this project. I was supposed to have a video come out uh, four days ago, I think. Missed that deadline. Finding it hard to care, honestly. And I'm a little bit over this project. Also, check out my pauldron. I made a post about it over on Instagram, but it took me like 12 hours to make. I'm very excited about it. It's the coolest thing in the world. I'm gonna make another one and probably some more stuff. Maybe I'll make a little reel for it or something or a short because I don't know how to make a video out of that. It just seems really boring. It's just me sitting on the couch in my sweats with two pairs of pliers. Here's what I'm gonna do now. This dress, basically finished. I have these flowers that you saw all over the floor second ago. Uh, those are gonna go on the dress. And then I have this fabric, the top of a curtain that's really cute and I like the floral. This is gonna go around the waist and then I'm gonna make a bow of it for the back. So this will tie in the flowers and all the pink. And then that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I want to start working on the next thing. I'm over this one. <laughs> I'm really excited about my next project. We're going Edwardian, I think. Anyways. We're done here.
Let's go look at the reveal. Cut to a clip of me talking shit about Regency. So first thing, okay, come on. I don't know. I think that's a wonderful idea. Annie, good job. Okay, don't touch my microphone. I'm so over this project. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 